Okay, hello, good afternoon, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the lecture uh, by uh, Dr. David Malau, Rector of the United Nations University. First of all, let's give him a big applause for Paul. Um, by the way, it's uh, already uh, distributed, so I don't spend a lot of time introducing it, but I'd like to talk a bit about uh, how I came to know him. Uh, I think I was, say, seven or eight years uh, when I was working with Jaika, and uh, he was a uh, rector of the United States. But actually, just by the end of it, he used to have the Canadian. Uh, Organization which funds research activities and it is a partner event to the development of And the organization I was working for, JICA, was the country. So we have something in common, and that company we have attached to their work organization. And, uh, and also we have a common friend who the organization ID. Canadian, uh, sorry, uh, international research center. Anyway, and uh, David Malone is um, and he combines practical knowledge working for the various Canadian government, and also he has extensive knowledge for what he developed and he built it. So today's topic of this lecture the performance of and the prospect of the United Nations since 1945. As we all know, the UN is perhaps at a crossroads, and especially after the invasion of the Ukraine by Russia, and people have been discussing what the UN is doing, and uh, maybe we'll discuss how the UN is doing. So, uh, to me, so a lot of things, and uh, you are really uh, free to do any question. Well, um, the design of today's meeting is something like this. We will give an initial talk for people half an hour or 40 minutes or so. And after that, we'll invite you to raise questions. Those who want to have make this very interactive. So I welcome your comments and questions. And after that, uh, we will serve coffee and we will perhaps remove these chairs so that even the, you know, cautious, reserved students might be able to approach him and have a talk with him. Okay. 
So we shall go for about half an hour to the night and see how that's the idea of the Okay. So without further ado, I'd like to invite the audience. So I can invite Thank you very much, Hiroshi. Uh, I've known each other for about eight and a half years now. Uh, uh, you know, a very good book about a book that five years ago I gave to you when you were a professor there. It's an audience who uh, really enjoys learning more from I was here eight years ago. Um, uh, five, seven years ago, and we really enjoyed coming out here. It's a wonderful mix of students from all over the place, and uh, I think it's a great experience with people from different countries. A study of all side people from different countries. You learn as much from them as you learn from the professors, and so I'm sure it's here a very rich experience for each of you. And whenever I was younger and was thrown into international company, I always benefited from it. So the university itself is a singular, the positive sense of the word singular institution. Uh, I thank you all for having elected uh, to come here. Uh, now, my topic is the UN. It's very difficult to understand the UN historically if you don't understand what else was going on in the world. So, I'm going to take a slight detour to start out to um, tell you a little bit about various phases in thinking about international development. International development became extremely intertwined with the United Nations, politically as well as operation. Many international organizations are in developing countries, but not so much politically. They're engaged to be helpful to them. But the UN was a very important really The UN was the forum which they want to matter at the outset of their independence. So um, let me start uh, with the beginning of our development. You may think that uh, somehow development was around for a long time as a philosophy or as a, uh, an operational project. Uh, or the national plan of refusal. And certainly, developing the country has been on the national priority of many governments. But as an international project, it's actually much more recent than you might like to uh, think. Uh, if you think of international organizations, they're also more recent than you might think. The first one we would recognize more or less as an international organization was the International Postal Union, I think in the late 1850s. The second one was the International Telecommunications Organization. It was called something else about that, but it was a country about the telegraph and how different countries could benefit from telegraphs which function through underwater cables and so on. Uh, and that was really only in the middle of the 19th There had been even earlier a set of interrelated conferences in Europe, uh, a conclave of European countries that was provoked by the recklessness of Napoleon and facilitated by the end of Napoleon as a political actor uh, with the Congress of Vienna in 1883. And in that conference, we get together across Europe during the 19th century. Uh, not much written about, but it was the 
this sort of permanent diplomatic conference, uh, which was a forerunner of the Fourth League of Nations, created after the First World War, with a constitution that was flawed in the sense that the whole made it ineffective once a number of countries disagreed with the majority of the countries. Uh, uh, back then. And one of the countries disagreed, by the way, was Japan. Um, uh, so the League of Nations failed to avert its own plays a different role in trying to avert the World War, because essentially it only had about 10 years okay. The rise of several countries that were um, asserted powers, um, uh, including the Soviets, including Germany, including the, 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 in effect, the League of Nations. The League of Nations had no a very small unit that worked on it. So the concept of development didn't exist yet because decolonization hadn't happened. The, uh, the notion of development, we think of today, international development, only started making sense with mass decolonization, which followed the Second World War. Now, you might wonder, what was the work that created to do in 1944? Nobody was thinking about it. Well, they really weren't. What it was actually called, what it was formerly still called, is the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And that was for the post World War religions uh, in Europe primarily. Uh, it did not vocation to support the developing world at all. It was much more like the IMF in that situation. 